Have you heard about Ocean Gate sub disaster? You must have heard, because everyone is buzzing about it. Five people tragically lost their lives while exploring the wreck of the Titanic. This 22 foot or about 7 meter long submersible is said to have been controlled using a Sony PlayStation gamepad. And not with the original, but some knockoff from Logitech. And now I want to share with you this absolutely amazing story about the most exciting events that have ever happened in the field of submarine disasters. So, picture this. The majestic Montana, a U.S. Navy nuclear missile submarine, confidently sailing deep in the Cayman Trough. Suddenly, this super-duper top-secret sub encounters an unidentified submerged object, zooming around like a manic dolphin on steroids. And guess what? The object zooms right up close to the submarine, causing it to lose energy. The sub has gone astray and started scraping against the underwater canyon wall. Accurate trajectory, bye-bye. Then, an officer conveniently launches the sub's emergency beacon a second before it collides head-on with another rock wall, drowning everyone on board like a wet sack of potatoes. Russian ships and submarines suddenly decide to swoop in like vultures, eager to salvage the doomed sub and its precious missiles. And, hold on tight because a hurricane is brewing! Can you believe it? In this action-packed lunacy, the Americans, in all their wisdom, come up with an ingenious plan. They send a U.S. Navy SEAL team to an underwater oil drilling platform owned by some rich dude called the Deep Corps as their base of operations. Of course, the designer of this magnificent rig, Dr. Lindsey Brigman, is just thrilled at the prospect of her creation being hijacked for this ridiculous mission. And her estranged husband, Foreman Bud, he's just as delighted. Benthic Petroleum, the rig's financier, generously agrees to let the Navy take over and even promises massive bonuses to the crew. Wow, who knew oil companies were so charitable? So, Lindsay herself, in all her majestic glory, decides to tag along with the SEAL team just to make sure this farce goes smoothly. After eight hours in a compression chamber, because that's how people usually spend their time, Lindsay and the SEALs finally emerge. Guess what no one notices? That the glorious SEAL leader, Lieutenant Hiram Coffey, has developed high-pressure nervous syndrome. Oh, but don't worry, it's just a slight hand tremor. He steadies his hand like the hero he truly is and joins the rest of the crew. You know, just your regular day in the life of a SEAL team. Fast forward, and here comes the best part of this roller coaster of nonsense. While searching for survivors, our group of heroes encounters some bizarre creatures that we shall never be able to identify. These creatures are the same ones responsible for sinking the sub in the first place. And wouldn't you know it, Lindsay, in her mini-sub, experiences a power loss just like the unlucky Montana did. Oh, the suspense! But wait, there's more! In a dramatic turn of events, Bud's partner sees a glowing creature and, naturally, panics like a damsel in distress. Oh, but he damages his breathing apparatus while attempting to flee, leaving us all on the edge of our seats. The Navy, in all their unparalleled brilliance, decides they better retrieve a Triton missile warhead from sunken Montana, just in case the Russians decide to crash the party. I mean, why not, right? Now, here's where the drama escalates. Our esteemed Lieutenant Coffee, might I add, is such an agreeable and pleasant character, and his team take matters into their own hands. Without any authorization, they hijack the rig's largest mini-sub, because who needs rules when you're a brave Navy SEAL? They somehow manage to extract the warhead from Montana, but, oh dear, they forgot one crucial detail. The mini-sub they grabbed is the only one capable of disconnecting the underwater umbilical cord connecting the platform to its parent ship. Boopsie daisy! Did I mention the raging hurricane that's still present? The exploration platform, as fate would have it, starts being tossed around like your Nana's false teeth in her monthly tub maintenance. As everyone braces themselves and their sanity, 
for the impact of impending doom. A crane breaks free from the ship above and plunges towards the rig. Rolls into the underwater chasm, causing all sorts of havoc, massive damage, and flooding. Some crew members die, others get injured, and everyone seems to be having the time of their lives. As the chaos ensues, tension mounts and everyone starts blaming those pesky seals for the catastrophe. But wait! There are more thrills incoming! The crew starts encountering these mysterious underwater beings, who, apparently, also possess intelligence. We have to call them NTIs to make them sound fancy. Oh, but Coffee, in all his wisdom, just knows these beings are a threat. Who needs facts or a logical explanation, right? Now, here's where it gets weird, as if it wasn't already. Lindsay, while lurking around, spots some brilliantly illuminated vehicle. Totally normal, right? Armed with her vast expertise, she frantically shows everyone pictures of these encounters, I assume taken on her disposable underwater camera. They're all astonished, but, oh, but what's this? A tentacle made of water? Of course. It turns into the faces of Lindsay and Bud, clearly showcasing its superior communication skills. Nah, 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 nah. And, oh, the drama continues as Coffee discovers the origin of this mystical tentacle in the rig's diving pool. He proceeds to close the hatch, trapping it. The tentacle looks at him, and this poor man becomes even more paranoid and terrified. Can't blame him, really. Now, here we reach the climax of this astounding tale. Coffee decides to strap the warhead to an ROV named Big Geek because they clearly ran out of name ideas at this point. He sends it diving down to the trench where the NTIs supposedly come from. What could possibly go wrong, right? Are you on the edge of your seat yet? I sure hope so, but hold your breath, because Bud and Lindsay, yes, our brave couple, decide to intervene. Bud, being the wise man that he is, dons an experimental diving suit that allows him to breathe oxygenated fluid. You know, because the liquid in your lungs is so much better than air. Armed with this fantastic creation, his mission is to dive down to the depths of the trench, disarm the warhead, and save the day. No pressure! As Bud descends to the depths of doom, the pressure starts taking a toll on him. But fear not! because Lindsay steps in to save the day by reminiscing about their personal life. Because, clearly, talking about their failed marriage is the best way to distract someone from the crushing pressure of the ocean depths. In a nail-biting moment, Bud manages to dismantle the bomb, sparing us all from a delightful explosion. However, now he faces another problem. He realizes he doesn't have enough breathing liquid to make it back to the rig. Oh no! What a surprise! Now, prepare yourself for the most heart-wrenching scene in the entire story. Lindsay, realizing the situation is dire, tells Bud to start swimming back while she drowns in her mini-sub, because what is true love and sacrifice without a bit of drowning involved? Oh, the love! The selflessness! Bud, in a desperate attempt to save his beloved, starts shaking and even slapping Lindsay, and guess what? It actually works! My heart is just bursting with joy, but the tale doesn't end there. Just when everyone thought it couldn't get any more ridiculous, the NTIs decide to make an appearance. They hoist their magnificent city from the chasm like an overenthusiastic weightlifter trying to show off. And what do you know? The entire naval fleet gets lifted as well. Astonishingly, Everyone on the rig survived this impeccable feat, no decompression sickness for them. They all realized that these wise beings must have magically prevented any harm from befalling their fragile bodies. And finally, the reunited lovebirds, Bud and Lindsay, rush into each other's arms like a pair of joyful newlyweds sealed with a passionate kiss. And there you have it, my friends, the most absurd, preposterous, and mind-boggling tale of mishaps underwater creatures, hurricanes, and undying love.
I hope you enjoyed this journey of sarcasm and nonsense as much as I did. Bravo!